Good evening to you from wherever you're watching us from. My name is Mary Mwoki and thank you very much for creating time to join us on this Tuesday um, of June 2022. Uh, you're just in time for a bulletin tonight and today we're speaking about finances and I'll be joined by a guest later on to discuss uh, more about SMEs. Now, financing conditions for small and medium-sized enterprises remain a pressing concern in many countries. SMEs continue to face the dual challenges of an uneven recovery and bank deleveraging in the face of the pandemic. Subdued growth and demand overall translated into declining profits for SMEs and reduced availability for internal funding in most countries. We are now joined by Humphrey Muturi, who is the commercial director at Equity Bank to shed more light on this topic. Thank you so much for joining us. We are now joined by Mr. Humphrey Muturi, who's the commercial director at Equity Bank, to discuss this and more. Thank you so much, Humphrey, for joining us. Thank you, Mary. We're glad you could make time. Now, a number of commercial banks have pumped consider I mean, sorry, considerable amounts of financial investments in SMEs, you know, in the last couple of months. Please explain this trend. Thank you, Mary. Um, the banking institutions have had an understanding and a review of what's happening in an economic uh, environment. I think looking at what's happened within the pandemic uh, period over the last two years, it has become abundantly clear to us that there's a need for intervention. And I think in this conversation today, mm -hmm. I will just be seeking to showcase some of the quality things that Equity Bank has done over the period to provide interventions for MSMEs uh, in this economy. The first thing that we recognized is many businesses were affected by lack of customers, the, the lockdowns that were imposed by the government for purposes of containment uh, mm -hmm. of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And obviously access to cash flow became significantly limited. And so it was important for us as a bank to seek to understand the situation and to provide innovative solutions that have been able to help these businesses continue to exist. One of those very important things is to be able to provide them with capital repayment holidays. Mm -hmm. Because if you have granted, and we have granted loans to uh, MSMEs, we are the largest MSME financier mm -hmm. in this market it became important for us to be able to listen to them and understand the plight of their business. We do not want them to go out of business. We want them to continue to thrive. Mm -hmm. And so in discussions with them, we were able to understand that we need to give them reprieve with regards to their repayments uh, structure. We have extended grace periods to them that extend anywhere between six months, one year, all the way to three years mm -hmm. to give them the ability to recover um, as a business and to be able to continue in existence. The second thing is we've not shied away from extending credit to them as well mm -hmm. because it's important for them to continue to have the oxygen for them to continue to operate. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that we've been able to do that is what we call understanding the ecosystem. Uh -huh. Large institutions continue to do manufacturing but they distribute their product using MSMEs. And so unless funding is afforded and provided to MSMEs, then the large institutions will have product available, but there is no market or no capacity to be able to, uh, to, to provide those products. And a clear example is this. If a small business owner has got a thousand shillings, not a thousand, a hundred thousand shillings of capital, mm -hmm. and with that hundred thousand shillings, they have to stock up on bread, on milk, yeah. on sugar, and all the other commodities that are consumed on a day-to-day -day basis, they become limited as to how much stock they can hold in any one given product. Mm -hmm. And so we recognized as a bank that we must continue to pump in the oxygen, i.e. cash flow, i.e. short-term loans to these MSMEs for them to continue thriving. And these are some of the interventions that we have put in the market mm -hmm. uh, for MSMEs to continue to thrive. All right. Um, maybe to just follow up on something you mentioned, you said that, you know, you're giving them, you know, capital uh, repayment breaks, yeah? 
Um, what exactly does that mean and how long are these breaks? I know you've mentioned a period of six months. Does it, do they start repaying when they break even? Or, you know, please tell us more about that. If we look at uh, certain sectors that have been significantly uh, affected or impaired, a typical example could be a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So when the lockdowns were imposed, basically there were no people visiting or patronaging those particular eateries. Mm -hmm. And so they found themselves not able to keep up with the repayment. Mm -hmm. And so in discussions with them, we were able to understand how long is this lockdown going to run for? Some of them pro projected that it's going to be six months. Mm -hmm. Others said maybe one year. And based on that, we sought to structure their facility to address the specific, unique uh, situation that they were facing. When there was a resumption to business because people came back to work, and we thank God that indeed uh, many businesses are, or most businesses are now open, they have been able to bounce back to the original level, some even to greater levels of operation. Mm -hmm. We are now able to give them the ability to pay their loan in terms with the original, with the original terms that were, were, were afforded to them. So it is a case-to-case -case basis, right. depending on how their business, their specific business, has been able to rebound. All right. Okay, so, um, you know, following up on that, are SMEs the next big frontier? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And within Equity Bank, um, it is very clear to us. And we have done a very clear analysis to be able to understand the, the opportunity that exists there. All right. SMEs are critical for the development of any country. And we know that SMEs, when properly supported and funded, they provide employment opportunities mm -hmm. to, f they provide five direct jobs yep. and five indirect jobs. Mm -hmm. As a bank, we have made a commitment that we are going to fund five million SMEs within the East and Central Africa region. That's a significant commitment. By doing so, by funding five million MSMEs in East and Central Africa, we are going to effectively create 50 million jobs. Mm -hmm. You know the challenge of unemployment and many people coming off uh, universities, our colleges, etc., and getting into the world of employment and finding that there are no opportunities. Mm -hmm. We had to make an intervention. And hence, using what we call the Africa Recovery and Resilience Plan, mm -hmm. we as a bank have made a commitment towards funding MSMEs because they are going to provide the future for these entrepreneurs and these people who are graduating from uh, universities. And I'm happy to talk about the Africa Recovery and Resilience Plan right. uh, as the conversation continues. Okay, maybe you could tell us briefly about that and then we'll come back to it later. Okay. So the world was basically affected by COVID, COVID-19. And there was interruption in the supply chains in the world, global supply chains. And we recognized that within Africa, we have vast raw materials. And so we decided as a bank, mm -hmm. what interventions can we put in place? We put together a plan that is called the Africa Resilience and Recovery Plan mm -hmm. that enables help businesses to basically turn around within the continent of Africa. There are five key pillars, actually six key pillars that we, are, that we have identified that are going to help the recovery of Africa. The first one mm -hmm. is food and agriculture. Mm -hmm. We are blessed with rich arable land within the continent of Africa. And we know that the funding to food and agriculture to farmers is very limited. Actually, the average in the Kenyan market is hovering about 3 to 5% funding for food and agriculture. And we have made a commitment as a bank that that is grossly insufficient. And we have made a commitment that within the next three years, we will increase our funding from the current average of 3 to 5% to 30%. It's a huge commitment. Mm -hmm. And so we have backed it up with a lot of research, a lot of human capital. We have employed agronomist people who are well-skilled within the agriculture space mm -hmm. towards supporting that agenda. So food and agriculture is the number one pillar. The other one is uh, manufacturing. We have lots of raw materials, but what do we do? Mm -hmm. For example, coffee. Most of our coffee is exported in its raw state, yep. which is very unfortunate. 
it goes to developed markets, it's processed. By the time it's returning here, it is sold five to ten times more than the original price. Mm -hmm. And so we have decided that we are going to increase and enhance our support for manufacturing. That they will at least do one value addition, one step value addition. Mm -hmm. If they can take it all the way to the very end, even better. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at markets, the markets that we operate in, whether it's Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, uh, South Sudan, we have a rep office in Ethiopia and also DRC, many of the raw materials in those countries have primarily been exported in their raw state. Mm -hmm. So we are supporting manufacturers. We are encouraging people to go into manufacturing so that effectively they can do the value addition and then that product will receive much, much better value in this particular market. Mm -hmm. The other one is trade and investment. Mm -hmm. And this is a very exciting one for us, especially knowing that we are a regional player. Mm -hmm. Many businesses today have a limited market, mm -hmm. limited either by physical location to a city or a country. Mm -hmm. We want to remove those borders. We are providing them the opportunity to have a greater market beyond Kenya itself. Mm -hmm. So for example, last year, November, December, we took 300 business people to the DRC. As a result of that, their eyes were open. The rich opportunities for us to collaborate with the DRC to be able to uh, invest in mm -hmm. that particular market. Mm -hmm. Many have since identified opportunities of collaboration, mm -hmm. investment into DRC, mm -hmm. and this is what we are talking about, mm -hmm. that trade and investment is going to be a significant contributor to the recovery and the resilience of the African continent. Mm -hmm. The other one is, and I talked about it, digitizing our ecosystem space, mm -hmm. where we are giving digital credit mm -hmm to MSMEs and to people within the economy. Whether it be the consumer or the small and medium enterprises, we are giving them access to credit, mm -hmm. so we are digitizing our ecosystems. Mm -hmm. I have already talked about the MSMEs and the work and the commitment that we have made to MSMEs that we are going to fund them, and it's going to result in job creation. The last one is entrepreneurship. One of the reasons why these businesses struggle and fail to succeed beyond the life that they exist today mm -hmm. is because of lack of financial information. Yeah. And through our foundation, Equity Group Foundation, mm -hmm. we are providing entrepreneurship training to them so that they are able to survive beyond the entrepreneur. They can become much bigger business, well-controlled, able to access credit, and to be able to access even greater markets. These are the things that we are doing uh, within the bank mm -hmm. to really cause the recovery mm -hmm. of the economy in Africa. Okay. Mm -hmm. And are you able to quantify the role that these SMEs are playing towards stimulating economic growth? I would say that SMEs probably contribute upwards of 60 percent mm -hmm. of the gdp of any country mm -hmm. and this is growing day by day mm -hmm. so they are a critical part of what happens within any economy mm -hmm. they create employment mm -hmm. they do the ability to distribute they are even becoming manufacturers themselves yeah. those msmes mm -hmm. we are encouraging those cottage industries to really grow beyond just trading but also get into value addition as well mm -hmm. so that there is a lot more stimulation that happens within the economic uh, front in which we operate. All right. And, and from where you sit, how much would you say SMEs were hit during the pandemic? How bad really is the situation? So it was quite severe mm -hmm. because um, with the, with the sh lockdowns, um, there was significant impact, mm -hmm. adverse impact to MSMEs mm -hmm. because they, they take the brunt. They have the touch with the end user every single day. Yeah. And so the moment you switch off the cash flow that comes from the consumer into the MSME, the impact is felt immediately. And hence the reason why interventions mm -hmm. from banks like Equity Bank have become very critical for them to be able to bounce back and experience the support that is required for them today. Okay. So the impact has been severe, mm -hmm. but we thank God because looking at the economic environment today, we have seen a resurgence. We have seen people who are very aggressive. MSMEs are very entrepreneurial. Yeah. They believe in themselves. They never say die. They wake up 
and they pursue the next opportunity, mm -hmm. which is the brilliant thing about the economy in which we operate in today. All right. So um, Equity Bank was really visible during the Kenya DRC trade mission. Um, what opportunities would you say are there for the Kenyan SME? Uh, thank you. Uh, the DRC is a very exciting addition to the um, East African community. Mm -hmm. Following their admission, we immediately got access to another 90 million people. And the landmass of DRC is significant. In fact, when you put all the East African countries together and plot them into DRC, you will still have space mm -hmm. uh, available. It talks about a large market mm -hmm. with great opportunities, lots of arable land. Mm -hmm. There are opportunities across mm -hmm. different spectra. Mm -hmm. What are those opportunities? First and foremost, manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. Huge opportunities for people to go into manufacturing, value addition in that particular market. It's a country that's endowed with great uh, raw um, and, and, and mineral resources whether it is uh, copper, cobalt, tin, um, you know, lots of rich diamonds as well are available there. So value addition and manufacturing is very critical. Another space that is really raring to go is building and construction. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the infrastructure, vast country, but the network in terms of road connectivity mm -hmm. is significantly disjointed. It gives an opportunity for uh, contractors to get into that market and provide that particular infrastructure. Other things include education, you know, providing education services, whether it is the population from DRC coming here or people going into the DRC market and establishing institutions of learning there has also been a very uh, interesting market. Um, floriculture. We are blessed with high altitude and flower farming here. We can export and are exporting those flowers now uh, into DRC. It's exciting because after that particular eye-opening trip, there have been airlines mm -hmm. who have decided to increase the frequency of their travel into DRC to basically address the growing need and the opening up and the collaborative environment that has been created by the two presidents. So there are lots and lots and lots of opportunities, even trading. Okay. I mean, just trading opportunities, mm -hmm. whether it is um, um, meat products or uh, fresh juices and alcoholic beverages. All of those are opportunities for you to venture into a new market mm -hmm. and be able to address that population of 90 million. Very exciting and a very comp uh, compelling reason okay. to venture into the DRC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is there a space for um, not just SMEs, but someone, let's say, maybe a youth who's just cleared campus and they're like, I want to go to DRC and see what's, you know, popping, as, as they say. Are there structures to guide this person into setting up in DRC, getting financing, and what would be the process? Okay. What we have done is we have a benefit of understanding the market really well. We've been in that market as a bank mm -hmm. for almost eight, almost going nine years now. Mm -hmm. In that period of time, mm -hmm. we have been able to develop strong networks mm -hmm. and friendly, cordial relationships mm -hmm. uh, within the DRC. Mm -hmm. So if an entrepreneur wanted to go and set up in DRC, mm -hmm. we are able to point them to um, legal firms who can help them understand and navigate the registration of company process mm -hmm. in that particular market, mm -hmm. account opening, which is at Equity Bank, yeah. we call it Equity BCDC, mm -hmm. uh, the regulations for purposes of business registrations and everything, access to those offices, we are able to support and facilitate them and point them in that direction. Okay. I must, however, say that, um, you know, as with any economy and with any new business, mm -hmm. there will be challenges that you will face. Mm -hmm. So it cannot, uh, for one minute, be seen to be just an easy walk in and uh, and and an easy access into the market. Mm -hmm. You do have to navigate that particular market, understand, study it well, and then make the decision mm -hmm. as to what investment you need to make in the market. Mm -hmm. But with the resilience that I have seen mm -hmm. by Kenyan business people, and also 
DRC people who want to come and venture into this market because it's a strong collaborative effort. The two presidents, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and Pre President Felix Sisekedi, mm. once they joined, they signed that um, you know partnership, bilateral um, economic partnership agreement. It has opened up the willingness for people to be able to support uh, business uh, across the two countries. Okay. Yeah. And, and maybe still on the DRC market, for SMEs that have ventured there or that you've maybe given capital to set up in DRC or set up in Nairobi or wherever, but specifically aligned to the DRC market, what are the repayment terms like? And not just that, because you see, you, you can, with the current tax regime, I must say it's really punitive. Yeah. Uh, so do we have discussions with legislators and policy makers you know in regards to maybe giving them tax breaks because it would be logic for you to finance them and then they are able to they're unable to keep up with the high taxes so is there sort of a balance on how they are not just repaying the loan but also uh, the tax regime especially for the smes okay mm -hmm. let me first address the issue of uh, repayment structures mm -hmm. In any structure that we put together for a businessman or for any consumer of a loan product, it is based on cash flows. Mm -hmm. So we seek to understand the cash flows of the business and the expected outcomes uh, during that particular period. And so that's the reason why entrepreneurship training becomes absolutely critical. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we give them the capacity and the wherewithal to be able to draw and put up financial projections. Mm -hmm. And even as they put up financial projections, mm -hmm. they are able to also sensitize mm -hmm. those financial projections. Mm -hmm. There's a best case scenario, mm -hmm. there is a likely scenario, mm -hmm. and a worst case scenario. Yeah. That's how you stress test your business mm -hmm. to ensure that it is foolproof and that it is designed to actually succeed. Mm. When we go through that process with these business people, mm -hmm. we are then able to structure a facility that is conducive. Mm -hmm. So for example, if it is a trading entity mm -hmm. and they know that their cash flow cycle, they are going to get a product here, mm -hmm. export it into the DRC market, mm -hmm. be able to get payment within a period of one, two or three months, mm -hmm. then we will structure the facility yeah. accordingly. Okay. If it is a longer term one in nature, mm -hmm. then we will give it the longer term structure okay. that is required for that. Mm -hmm. With regards to taxation, mm -hmm. it is also important that every businessman be able to understand and do their due diligence mm -hmm. on the tax laws because tax laws are different in every country. They fully well understand the tax laws within the country of Kenya mm -hmm. and the same should also apply mm -hmm. when you venture into a into a new market mm. we've got experts who we are able to link them up with for mm -hmm. them to be able to go step by step to understand the legal framework mm. the taxation framework etc mm. so that when they go into that market and are operating and doing business there then they are in a place where the likelihood of success is significantly increased right. and so we do not let just a business person or an sme just walk uh, without proper guidance we walk the journey with them as a partner in that particular journey mm -hmm. to ensure that they get success. All right. So we are grappling with a very weak shilling at the moment. How is that affecting business? Um, currency and exchange rates is obviously a topical subject today. Mm -hmm. And we have been very fortunate as a country to have had, number one, a very stable uh, exchange rate mm -hmm. over a period of time. I think probably over the last 20 or so, or so years, there has been some very modest gra um, depreciation mm. in the currency exchange rate. And so many businessmen were able to project and plan for their, uh, for their exchange rate requirements. Mm -hmm. Why has that been the case? It has been the case because we have been able to export in the past sufficient product mm -hmm. to be able to balance or next to balance mm -hmm. our requirement for the dollars mm -hmm. and hence created a stable environment. Mm -hmm. Many other countries have been in far severe situations where depreciation of the currency has been much more rapid. Mm -hmm. Over the last couple of um, 
months, I think we have seen a bit more volatility within the shilling. And I think it's purely driven by demand versus supply. And hence, it becomes important for any person who is exposed to currency uh, volatility mm -hmm. to be aware of that and to be able to anticipate and project how they're going to pay for their for their for their import mm -hmm. import bills mm -hmm. so it's really a case of supply and demand mm -hmm. and those dynamics seeking to even out and it's certainly uh, showing in the exchange rates that we see today All right. yeah. has that affected the repayment plans for maybe the SMEs that were uh, repaying their loans the fortunate thing is, as a financial discipline, mm -hmm. we ensure that we match currency to inflows. Mm -hmm. So if you are requiring a facility in Kenyan shillings, mm -hmm. we require that you have Kenyan shillings. And that's the vast majority of MSMEs. Okay. They do trade in local currency. Mm -hmm. And so they match it with the collections that they receive. Mm -hmm. And so that may not have affected mm -hmm. MSMEs to a great extent mm -hmm. because they are still selling in the local market. Mm -hmm. Their loan product and facility is also mm -hmm. in the local currency. Okay. However, mm -hmm. there are others who are exposed to currency because a lot of their imports and inputs are imported products. And hence, they have needed to ensure that at the time of repayments of those particular import bills, mm -hmm. then they have sufficient currency to be able to settle for the same. Okay. And so those are experiencing a challenge at the moment. All right. Yeah. But from where you sit, would you say we have an acute dollar shortage in the country? It's probably not in my place to comment on that. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 it's a market dynamic. Mm -hmm. We seek to service our client requirements as much as is possible. Mm -hmm. There may be some shortage that's experienced. I, I mean, without a doubt, it is, mm -hmm. it is known that there is some shortage that's experienced in the market. Mm -hmm. But I'd be hard-pressed to uh, give a direct answer to a question around acute sh shortage. Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. And if we remove the word acute, would you comment? <laughs> Let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. We are really, as a bank, seeking to steer our manufacturing mm -hmm. for purposes of export. Mm -hmm. That responsibility remains with us business people, entrepreneurs who are in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. The more we are able to generate product that we can export, the more we are going to address the needs that are there. So we, we, we sh probably should be not pointing fingers at anyone, All right. but rather looking to see how do we be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. And to be part of the solution mm -hmm. is to increase the supply mm -hmm. of product that we can export, value-added product that we can export. And that's what we are championing as a bank. Value-added product that is going to give us significant inflows, mm -hmm. that is going to s offset the requirements that are there in the economy. Right. So for example, Mm -hmm. um, look at tourism, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I was listening to um, some people who are in the tourism sector mm -hmm. and I think they are saying that there is a significant improvement mm -hmm. in terms of consumption of their facilities and their services. We want to encourage that so that we are offering quality service yeah. in our hotels that we become the destination of choice for tourists globally so that we can be able to earn a lot more foreign exchange. Food and agriculture. We need to export a lot more tea. We want to export a lot more coffee. We need to export a lot more flowers and many other products that mm -hmm. we can actually export from the Kenyan market. Okay. So our focus needs to be, how do you solve for the problem? Okay. When there is a challenge, focus on the solution rather than just, you know, uh, probably bickering about the problem that is there. All right. Yeah. Okay. So um, a lot of tier one banks are recorded impressive profits in the year ended December 31st, you know. So is that a reflection of how things are in the economy? And if it is, how would you explain the fact that Kenyans are saying they don't have money in their pockets? So how do you marry the two? Our responsibility as a bank is to stimulate economic growth, mm -hmm. to provide financial intermediation mm -hmm. between those who have got surplus funds and those who have a requirement. Once you do that responsibility very, very well, you are able to do well. Mm -hmm. 
our responsibility as a bank is to provide an enabling environment for people to be able to access credit. What do we do within Equity Bank? Number one, mm -hmm. we provide financial literacy so that those businesses can actually succeed, mm -hmm. that they're not falling over. We have done that very, very well. I think we have disbursed more than 95 billion shillings to MSMEs mm. through the program of um, entrepreneurship that has helped them to be able to grow their business. For example, we have a program called Young African Works. These are young entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who have identified business opportunities. We have provided them the funding. We've provided them first the training that's necessary for entrepreneurship. As a result of that, they have access to credit. And guess what happens? The moment they run their businesses well, because of the training they have received, they are able to pay their loans well. When they pay their loans well, mm -hmm. we are able to increase the funding. So their businesses are able to grow from strength to strength. Mm. So I would say banks that have mastered the art mm -hmm. of providing financial intermediation and solving for the needs in the economy will do well. In Equity Bank, there are several other things that we do that within the F Equity Group Foundation. You know about our Wings to Fly program, which has really endeared the brand across the market, where we provide free education for young scholars. Many of those scholars, when they go through their schooling journey, we are encouraging them to go into entrepreneurship. And then we provide funding to them. Okay. These are some of the stimuluses that are going into the economy towards supporting them to actually succeed. Mm -hmm. And so, as they do well, mm -hmm. as we do good, mm -hmm. by supporting them in their learning journey, mm -hmm. in their business growth mm -hmm. journey, then we can actually do well as a bank. So I would say that because of the interventions that we have put into the market and into the business space, they are actually able to do well and to succeed. And then it shows in the financial results mm -hmm. that, are sh that are shown. But might I also say, uh -huh. We have also mastered the art of trade finance mm -hmm. as an institution. We are encouraging more and more people to look at international trade. Not just trade here, but international trade. Providing them financial instruments that protect them from risks when they're doing international trade. They may not know their supplier very well, but the document, whether it's a letter of credit or whatever other financial instrument that we provide to them, it provides them the security that's necessary mm -hmm. for them to do business in a safe manner. So by doing that well, we have been able to see the results come through uh, in, our, in our performance as a bank. All right. Um, so maybe I'll take you back as we wind up to something you mentioned about an Africa resilience or recovery plan that you have in place. For how long has that been in place and... Um, you know, is it a short term or a long term program? The Africa Resilience and Recovery Plan was put together as an intervention to address the COVID pandemic and the negative or adverse uh, economic um, impact of COVID. Mm -hmm. And so we knew as a bank it is necessary for us to be able to take certain interventions. Mm -hmm. We have set aside close to 700 billion shillings towards supporting these businesses that operate mm -hmm. in this particular environment. Mm -hmm. And we have offered it to business people towards recovery of their businesses. Mm -hmm. So we are going into the market, encouraging entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that as a bank, we will go the journey with you. Mm -hmm. We have partnered with many other nations mm -hmm as well as many other institutions yeah. who have listened to our plan mm -hmm. and they said, this plan certainly makes sense. Mm -hmm. Can we partner with you towards ensuring that we succeed in this particular journey? Right. So it was post COVID mm -hmm. and it's an intervention that will run probably for the next three to five years. Mm -hmm. So it is a medium term plan. Mm -hmm. And then we will keep refining and mm -hmm. looking to mm -hmm. see has it articulated and has it sufficiently addressed the needs of the market? Mm -hmm. If the answer is yet, yes, we continue to soldier on. Right. If we need to do further interventions, then we certainly to do that. Right. But as a bank, mm -hmm. we are open for business. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to support businesses in the economy mm -hmm. and individuals in the economy mm -hmm. for them to succeed. And that has to be 
our joint responsibility right. in this marketplace. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So one of the pillars you mentioned was food security. Um, you know, the climate is not what it used to be. Have you, as a bank, taken that into consideration? And if yes, what are some of the mitigating factors you have in place? In food and agriculture, we have identified that there are a couple of things that affect or challenge mm -hmm. the success of a farmer. Yep. And a couple of them, I'll just try and list them out uh, very quickly. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest ones mm -hmm. is not having the right inputs. Yep. So using our education and entrepreneurship training, we are able to ask a farmer, have you done a test of the soil to ensure that the crop that you're planting is going to be adequately nourished? Is that the right environment for that particular crop? Mm -hmm. And we have seen in cases where proper interventions have been made, mm -hmm. a cow can increase, the same one cow operating in the same space mm -hmm. can increase its production up to four times mm -hmm. the amount of milk. How does that happen? making sure that it has the right inputs. That only comes when a farmer is empowered mm -hmm. by education, mm -hmm. as well as giving him the necessary funding mm -hmm. for purposes of input. Mm -hmm. So we are scaling up the output that is coming in the food and agriculture space mm -hmm. within the limited resource of land or space that we have. The second one is post-harvest losses. Mm -hmm. Many farmers are not able to adequately take care of their finished product, their, f their final product, mm -hmm. before they can access the market. Yeah. And there are lots of post-harvest losses. Mm. Either whether it's maize, then they get exposed to aflatoxins, or they get weevils, or things of that nature, or during the, the growing pr process, it was not properly taken care of, so that you know the harvest was limited. So we are providing the education and the inputs necessary mm -hmm. to ensure that maximum production is achieved. Mm -hmm. But once that production has actually been taken off the farm, mm -hmm. then indeed proper storage is actually done. Mm -hmm. The third one mm -hmm. is access to markets. We are connecting these farmers to the final off taker. Mm -hmm. Many of them rely, say, on brokers yeah. and the brokers may not necessarily be the best channel for them to be able to have sufficient return. Mm. So using our ecosystem approach, we want more and more farmers and we have connected farmers so that now they're doing contract farming mm -hmm. for an already agreed off taker mm -hmm. and at a pre-agreed price. Mm -hmm. So our farmer is assured this level of production, this quality, I have a guaranteed off taker. Yep. This is the work that we are doing within this market mm -hmm. and hence addressing the issue of post harvest losses. Okay. I think doing those particular interventions mm -hmm. and then finally the value addition that happens. So for example, encouraging the tea farmers to be able to add value to their tea. Mm -hmm. We have seen lots of quality teas coming from Kenya, which is processed here in Kenya. Much of it goes for exports, but some of it is actually also sold here. Yeah. Some of them have been um, sold in this local market as flavored teas. Mm lemon tea, chamomile tea, etc., etc. Much of that tea is actually Kenyan tea. Mm. And so we have encouraged entrepreneurs to be able to add that kind of value, okay. which is then being able to address the market requirements. Okay. And hence, food and agriculture continues to be a significant, important pillar mm. in what we are doing uh, as, an, as an institution. All right, yeah. fantastic. Uh, maybe in a minute or less, you can give us a closing shot. Um, no, I think uh, it's been a very um, exciting uh, opportunity to engage and, and to speak to, to, to all who are watching. Mm -hmm. And I think we, my, my final comment is that we have a responsibility to steer the growth of Africa. Let us not look at somebody else, blame the government or blame regulation or this or the other. There is an already existing platform that has been provided through the bank, equity bank, and through the interventions that we have talked about through the Africa Resilience and Recovery Plan that is going to help 
in growing and turning around the fortunes of Africa. Mm -hmm. And I think if we do that appropriately, we will get ourselves in a place where we are much better as a continent, integrated and supporting the economic growth mm -hmm. of, of our country and providing employment for the young, the young people, the generation that is coming uh, after us. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We're glad you could make the time. That has been certainly very, very informative. Thank you so much for your time. Unfortunately, that's all we had time for tonight. Thank you so much uh, for keeping it here at Metropole TV. Do keep the conversation going on our social media platforms. It's been nice having you along for this conversation. Do have a lovely night.